Okay, welcome everybody. Th uh, thanks for joining. And Cornelius and I have been planning this webinar for some time, so I'm, I'm really happy that we finally um, have it ready to present. And we, we, when we heard about Privacy Idea, we were, were um, interested because it's an open source platform for managing strong authentication. And a lot of people think of the Glue server as an authentication platform, but it, in, in some ways it, it really isn't. Um, the Glue platform is a federated identity platform. And I think unless you're an identity geek, you'll think that I'm splitting hairs here, but um, really in the Glue server, authentication happens. And then really the main point of federated identity protocols like SAML and OpenID Connect is to share attributes about the person with, with, um, um, with the application. So a website redirects to the Glue server, Glue authenticates that person somehow, and then um, returns an assertion back to the website with this is the person's first name, last name, email address, et cetera. So one of our missions at Glue is to um, connect to various authentication technologies. And, and our take on it has been that different clients have different requirements and business use cases. And our goal has been to support a diverse range of authentication technologies. So, um, so I, I kind of fall into the camp of there is no silver bullet and, and that you know for some customers, biometric is fantastic. For some customers, OTP is great. For other customers, you know, FIDO is amazing. And I think everyone agrees that passwords are not great. Um, um, and that we need to um, reduce our reliance on passwords. But what is the best way to improve the strength of an authentication um, depends to a certain extent on the device that you have in your hands, the company or the organization that has issued you, the, you those credentials, how you're gonna manage them. So there's a lot of different um, use cases out there and there's a lot of ways to mitigate risk. And, and our goal at Glue is to support um, basically any type of authentication um, that, that's out there. Um, so we, we sort of wanna be neutral. Although we do ship with a couple of authentication capabilities, for example, you can store passwords in Glue um, and we support FIDO. So there are a couple of cases where we built in some authentication functionality, but there's like 50 or so authentication scripts in the Glue server um, to connect to different platforms. And what I found really interesting about privacy idea is that um, it provides like a formalized framework for managing authentication that is very flexible and allows you to implement um, um, several different workflows, but it has some built-in functionality around audit. And um, it's just a very organized and sort of formalized way to manage authentication. And, and I just thought it was a great com complementary fit with the Glue server. And we're planning to um, to really to pitch this um, idea to, to new customers, um, you know, who need this um, extra control. So hopefully that intro doesn't confuse the topic more than help. Uh, what I'd like to do now is to um, to introduce um, Cornelius um, Kolbel, um, who's the founder and CEO of Privacy Idea, and he's going to give a quick overview of um, of their offering and and a, a quick demo, and then we'll take some questions at the end. So Cornelius, um, thanks a lot for joining and I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Mike, for the introduction. So um, actually, I think you wrapped it up very well. So <laughs> let's see how I can um, elaborate on this. So um, as Mike said, privacy idea is an authentication server. And this is an important point uh, to make here. So we are managing authentication objects in a central manner. And now I want to show you how this can extend um, the way you are working with uh, Glue. So let's see, next slide, thank you. Um, so my name is Cornelius and I'm the project leader of Privacy Idea. 
and founded the company NetNights, um, which offers services around privacy idea. And um, we will only have three small parts. I will give you a, a short uh, overview about privacy idea and net nights. Then I will give some more details about privacy idea. And finally, I will try to give you a demo and uh, cross the finger that nothing breaks. So <clears throat> why did we actually came up with privacy idea? So we saw the need for uh, an open solution to manage different second factors for a lot of users and also in a way that a lot of different applications could authenticate against this central service. And so privacy idea is a central authentication system and a management system. So you are using it in your network to manage your authentication objects or second factors. And also um, that applications authenticate against privacy idea. It is open source and runs on premise. And the very interesting thing is it supports lots of tokens, lots of different token types. And so you can use it in a lot of different scenarios. Actually, fun fact, this was also very important for us because we don't like to do the same thing over and over again. So we, we try to have different scenarios and different ways of doing things. So NetNights was founded in 2015. We are located in Germany in the geographical center in the small town named Kassel. And um, we are absolutely specialized in multi-factor authentication and uh, public key infrastructure. So if you want to know anything else from us, we don't know it and we need uh, partners like Glue to cover other topics. So our topic is solely two-factor or multi-factor authentication. And thus our core business is um, providing services around privacy idea selling service level agreements and um, providing support for our customers. Currently, we are nine technicians or developers and um, we are striving to get more. We are serving over 100 customers worldwide in many different countries. Um, and actually, currently, we are doing this from Germany. It still works out very well. And we also serve uh, customers from different business areas. So we have um, normal um, economy. Um, we have a few banks as customers. Um, we have a lot of customers from healthcare because they have uh, usual remote access uh, uh, scenarios. We have uh, customers in the public sector. Um, for example, um, when uh, different states try to provide multi-factor authentication to uh, teachers in the state and they, they are providing uh, centralized cloud services, then people like to use Privacy IDEA to do so. So, but why is Privacy IDEA open source? Well, because we like it. Actually, it's our philosophy that software should be open source, it should be usable, it should be, it, it, the user should be able to understand what it, what the software is doing. And a very big plus for us is the very rapid development. Um, we can rely on other open source components and so we can do great things in a very short time. And this is important for us. And I think this is also very interesting for our customers. And another big thing is the sustainability of open source. So if you're running privacy idea, you can be sure that um, this solution will last. You can use it as long as you wish to. Um, actually, in our line of business, we had customers who um, 
we were using closed source proprietary uh, solutions and they ran into problems that the systems went end, end of life and uh, that they were not able to go on using the system because they licensed 1000 users and they were not able to enroll second factors to the user number 1001 and 1002. And there we have actual um, migration scenarios where um, companies solve this issue by migrating to privacy idea. We have a small blog post about this, which is linked here. Our mission statement as a, um, as a company or as a team is that we see that uh, companies can or organizations can lose control over their F, uh, over their access and um, they are bound to some proprietary solutions or vendors or even cloud services and we at netnights we help our customers to regain their control and to use privacy idea in a flexible way that fits their needs. And so finally, you can regain your control. So again, why should you run a dedicated central 2FA management system, a system that only does two-factor authentication and nothing else? And I think the important part, because why should you do it? As, as Mike said, um, Glue provides a certain amount of uh, two-factor authentication. If you're looking at other open source solutions, they offer two-factor authentication. Um, but the thing is, if you have a dedicated 2FA system, you can concentrate with this system on, on doing two-factor authentication and you can evolve quicker because we are only doing two-factor authentication. And so we can adapt new technologies much quicker. Um, currently, for example, it's FIDO2. We are integrating in, in a lot of uh, um, plugins, but um, it will also, uh, we will also, for example, work on biometric mechanisms and on every upcoming uh, authentication mechanism. And what we do with a central dedicated 2FA management system is simply to adapt to authentication protocols. So we do not implement a SAML protocol, a SAML IDP or a radius server, but we plug into existing reliable solutions, for example, with radius into the free radius server. And so we just add the connection from a from an existing reliable solution to privacy idea. So let's take a look at some details of privacy idea. Again, it runs centrally on premises. So the very big uh, plus for the uh, of this is that you enroll one token to a user and you can use this token everywhere the user wants to. Often customers start with a with a scenario where they enroll a token, for example, for remote access. Or imagine you would enroll a token to do a single sign-on with Glue. But maybe half a year later, you say, oh, I would like to use a token to actually authenticate at my SSH login somewhere. And there is no way to connect this to Glue. Then you could simply connect your SSH lock in your pump stack to privacy idea. This would be a task of the IT team of the back end and the user who has the token already enrolled one a half a year before. He does not need to re-enroll a second token. He does not need to do anything. He just can use this existing token for a new application. So we support already a lot of different authentication protocols. Um, the pump stack, we can integrate into the pump stack. We have a credential provider for authenticating uh, to a Windows desktop um, via the free radius server. We support the radius protocol. Um, we have an 
Elder proxy, we support uh, XAML2, OpenID Connect, everything you wish to. And so we have a lot of different um, ID support for IDPs like simple XAML, PHP, Keycloak, Shibboleth, and even you can even run privacy idea with uh, Microsoft ADFS if you <laughs> if you have to. Um, and now finally, we can also plug into Glue, so we can we can rely on the protocols Glue is providing, and we simply forward the authentication request to Privacy Idea. Privacy Idea is completely based on a REST API. So everything you will see during the demo, you can do it with a via REST protocol. And so you can configure the complete system via REST and you can uh, integrate it into your existing customer portals or user self-service portals. The web interface is a single page application, of course, which uses this REST protocol and so I think this is a first step where we are very flexible. Here I have a small uh, schematic. In the middle, you can see the privacy idea server. On the lower right side, you have your existing users. So probably your users already reside in an LDAP directory. So privacy idea can connect to this LDAP directory. On the lower left side, you see the administration of privacy idea, which is either done via the REST protocol or via the web UI. And at the top, uh, you see that you can connect the many different um, applications to privacy idea. Okay, as I said, first thing you need to find your users and privacy idea can connect to existing user stores like LDAP, Active Directory, SQL databases, uh, you name it. Um, so we, are, we, we don't usually do user management. You can do it, but in 95%, you won't do it because you already have one. And um, we have a connect, so let's say we have a concept <laughs> of resolvers and realms where we can group together different user stores and from these user stores we can form realms and uh, this is a good way for example to achieve a multi-tenant capability as often said we support a lot of different token types um, <laughs> we even support funny token types like uh, email and SMS if you still want to use it. Uh, we support different kind of smartphone apps, uh, key fob tokens. Uh, we support the YubiKey. Um, we also can manage uh, X509 certificates. Um, we support FIDO devices. So, and we can move with these supported token types, we can move very quickly and adapt very quickly to new token types and also to kind of virtual token types. For example, we have a, a four ice token. Um, <clears throat> if you want to launch missiles or I don't know, secure something very special where you can virtually configure that several users have to come together with their second factors. And only if they come together, they will be able to a login as this very account. So some small side effects. And of course, since tokens are managed, not only can the user have many different token types at once, but of course you can also very easily have fallback scenarios. You can have, if, if the user loses his second factor, it is very easy to enroll a new or a re replacement token for the user. And this way, in my opinion, you have two advantages. You can avoid a technology lock-in and a vendor lock-in. So you might start, maybe you today you still start with one-time password, smartphone apps, but you can use privacy idea to smoothly 
migrate, for example, to FIDO2 tokens during the next two years because the same system already supports the other um, authentication technology. So if you cannot decide today, you can decide later. Privacy ID provides policies. Policies define how the system work. We have a concept of event handlers, which can be used to trigger new actions because every REST request that arrives at privacy ID is an event and you can attach new actions or such REST requests can trigger new actions. And this is very interesting because we do not know what our customers will be doing with the system. And um, this is a fun fact. This bomber you see here came back from World War II, or this is a, a sum of bombers that came back to the US from World War II. And the red dots are actually the, the points where they were hit. And so they said, oh, it would be a good idea to actually enforce the armor of the of the bomber where the bomber was hit. Uh, but a wise mathematician then said, oh no, that's not a good idea because the bombers that were hit at the red dots actually were able to fly and were able to come back. We should enforce the armor where we do not have red dots because these were the, lo the locations where probably bombers were hit that then uh, crashed and didn't come back. So often if you're sitting in the development you, you think of a way like customers would work, but often that's wrong. And so we try to be flexible because sometimes it's difficult to anticipate what customers actually need. Okay, so let's take a look how we are doing it. Um, how many time do I have left? I... Oh, you're good. There's, um, okay. you know, hopefully another like 10 minutes or so, but. Okay, great. Um, I have here a couple of tabs in my browser. I have uh, the privacy idea server, and um, I will try to take you through the server quite quickly. So first, as I said, we connect to user stores. Um, I can con connect to different kind of user stores here. I, for example, I connected to an uh, LDAP directory. And I can very specifically define where my LDAP is located. And I also can, can very uh, specifically map what attributes do I want to read from LDAP and um, how do I want to use these attributes in privacy idea. Then I can combine these user resolvers um, to the realms I mentioned. And you see, I have a realm test foo here, and I added two resolvers, for example, my LDAP, and also uh, a flat file resolver with some additional users. Maybe there are some external users who are not located in your LDAP, and you just want to merge in the, these couple of additional users. So you can easily do it this way. Um, then I can enroll a lot of different tokens, or let's see, <clears throat> I uh, find my user. Here I am. And I could enroll a new token for the user, and I can enroll a lot of different token types. Um, and I actually have enrolled an HOTP token and a push token to the user, which you can see here. If you say, oh, this is, these are far, far too many tokens, you are right. Usually you would probably say, hmm, um, I only want to use two or three different token types for my users to keep things simple. And to do so, you can define policies. And policies are located in a certain scope um, we know the scope uh, administrator and user. There we can define what administrators are allowed to do or what 
users are allowed to do if they are um, logging into the self-service portal. And defining what an administrator is allowed to do, um, you can use this, for example, to very specifically define what a service desk is allowed to do. If you have operators with more privileged rights or if you have uh, uh, super administrators or whatsoever. We have the scope authentication and authorization very, um, for example, can, um, well, do I have a nice, nice example? I don't know. Um, yeah, the very simple example where we can define um, if privacy idea should also authenticate the first static knowledge factor which can actually be a pin set for the token or which can be the password from the user store. So the, for example, the LDAP password. We can also do funny things like a pass through. So uh, this way we can migrate old systems because privacy idea can forward the authentication request to other systems if the user has no token assigned in privacy idea. So there's lots of different ways to configure privacy idea to define the behavior. And uh, when you're finally wondering what actually happened in privacy idea, we have a very detailed audit log um, that tells me who did what. So everything that is done in the system is recorded in the audit log. It is digitally signed so that you can also be sure that no one uh, fiddled around with it. And if you need to, um, <clears throat> if you need to automate your processes, it is a great thing to use event handlers. And um, let's see. Hmm. Okay, uh, a usual example would be, for example, to write notifications. So we have different handler modules that can um, uh, trigger different actions. So if anything happens in the system, we could send a notification to the user, to the administrator, to whoever. We can modify tokens or we can, um, we can execute arbitrary, arbitrary scripts or for um, statistics purposes, for example, we can simply count certain events. For example, if we want to have statistics about failed authentication requests, we can simply count this event. Yeah. Okay, so that's privacy idea. Now I will take a look at my user here. And this user actually has two tokens. Um, I can also test such a token. Um, I think this is his uh, OTP pin. You see, I set a pin so I don't forget it um, to HOTP and this is my one-time password because this token type is an HOTP token. I can test it here and it will tell me that it works out nice. Um, let's see. Now I prepared, a, okay, wait a second. I have a glue server here. Um, which I configured this way that I'm locked out. Hmm. Okay, that's uh, that's okay. Your session I might have expired if you're on the login page too long. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it doesn't matter. That's not the interesting part. So actually, I configured a, um, a custom script in the glue server, which we wrote so that the glue server will forward the authentication request to privacy idea. 
And um, yeah, okay. So now I'm, I have set up a, um, an OpenID Connect application, a simple application, OpenResty. I'm, I want to access this application and I'm redirected to my Glue login. And now I can log in with my user and I can type in my um, OTP pin. Now I'm currently typing in HOTP, which is the token pin of my OTP token. The glue server, the, the interception script will talk to privacy idea and will ask me to enter the OTP value from my uh, smartphone app. And great, I'm authenticated and redirected to OpenResty. So since privacy idea can manage many different token types, I can also do this with other tokens. So the user Cornelius has two tokens. So now I'm entering the pin of my second token. And my second token actually is, you might have heard it, it's a push token. So I'm accepting the authentication request on my smartphone and I'm also logged in. And when I'm going back to my privacy idea server, I can actually see this, wait a second. I can actually also see this in the audit log. I can filter for the validate check request. And then I see that here the user authenticated, for example, successfully with the push token. And down here, I authent uh, successfully authenticated with my HOTP token. So this is everything I wanted to show you so far now. So if you have any questions, I'm... Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll start out available. with one quick question. Um, yeah. Um, so one of the requirements we hear a lot at Glue is for Windows login, you know, desktop login. I heard you mention ADFS. Um, is it possible to use Privacy Idea for Windows desktop login? Yes. Um, then we would use the credential provider, uh, which is actually uh, a component you are installing on the Windows desktop itself or on a Windows terminal server. And it, um, in addition to the Windows password, it is requesting a second factor from the user, which is then authenticated against privacy idea. Okay, interesting. We can um, also so... do ADFS, but this would be used, for example, for Office 365 or something like this. Um, so a question from um, one of the participants. Um, I guess in in the um, event handlers, could you call an external script, like um, maybe something, you, some other script you had written on the system to trigger or call an API or something? Yeah. Wait a second. Great question, because this is often a way in projects where we get very deep and automated. So um, actually we have this script handler and I'm not sure, did I? No, unfortunately not. So this is the script handler and um, it will list all executables which are located in a directory on the privacy idea server. And this could be everything, this could be most of the time, it's a Python script that uses the Python libraries we are providing so that it's easy to, to mangle anything in privacy idea. It could also be a shell script, which simply reboots the server or I don't know what. So you can actually call everything. And, um, oh, unfortunately, I, I don't have a script, but then you could also at the options define which parameters should be passed to the script. For example, the name of the user or the serial number of the token. I see. One last question. I want to um, sort of keep it 
um, yeah. uh, within our time limit. But um, at Glue, we spend a lot of time on um, high availability. So maybe mm -hmm. you could just quickly comment on what's the strategy for um, achieving, let's say, high availability and multi data center deployments. Mm -hmm. um, we do this um, completely over the uh, via the database. So you are setting up a redundant database system, and then you can have several privacy idea nodes which connect to this redundant database, either to different nodes of the database or to a, a central redundant point. I see. Okay, well, this is, um, 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 and I just want to add that we're going to add the privacy idea script into the standard glue distribution. Um, if it's not there already, um, in, the, in the next version that we ship, we're definitely going to add this as a um, um, sort of a default script. You know, there's a lot of scripts at glue, but we're, we're going to, so when you install glue, you'll see it there. And I think it's a great way for customers who are looking to add more formalization and um, more out of the box features around auditing and on sort of control of the workflow and provisioning. So, um, um, so we're we're definitely we're really excited about this. Um, thank you, Cornelius, for um, sharing that today. And um, we're going to post this video online. So if you want to review something, you can come back later. And if you have any questions, um, net nights and um, privacy idea, well, we have links on Glue's uh, technology partner um, page also. So that's it for me. Uh, Cornelius, did you want to add anything before we uh, wrap up? Only thank you for having me with you here today. Okay, it was you're great welcome. Time. Thank you. And okay, thanks everyone for joining. I'm ending it now. Okay, great.